Hey friend, if you're done with doing your cold exposure in a water-filled garbage can, maybe you're wanting to make the jump into a full-sized chest freezer as an ice bath. The good news is that it's really easy to do, so I wanna save you from doing all the research that I did before I made mine, give you some of the tips that I learned, some of the mistakes that I made, and hopefully help you on your way. We're looking for a chest freezer. Whatever you do, don't just walk into Home Depot and buy a freezer. That will most likely waste a lot of money and get you features that will hold you back and just be getting you off on the wrong foot. What freezer should we pick, Nick? That's the, that's the big question. Cool, this smells like rotten fish. Freezers from the early 2000s are a lot more reliable and have less bells and whistles, which is kind of critical. So you want something simple and reliable. Some things to avoid are lids that are fancy. So lids with alarms, lids that auto lock, avoid getting one that has a bare metal interior. Painted is preferred and plastic is even more preferred than painted metal. Most freezer openings don't go fully vertical when they're open. So if that's gonna annoy you while you're inside of it, make sure you get one with a hinge system that can actually be removed or modified. 18, that's basically my shoulders touching. And then on the wider side, 21 and a half inches plus. So this one's 22 inches plus, exactly. If I want my full legs to be out, 52 inches. So this one's 55. Oh, this one's a little narrower. So this one's 21. Yeah. You need to get Joe Rogan in there. <laughs> yeah. So, but I do follow some guys that do do it and uh, the, the results are outstanding. I found this Frigidaire, which checked all my boxes, was in my budget, and boom, half off the price of a new one. Awesome. When you transport it, if you tilted it up at any sort of angle, make sure that you let it rest flat level for 24 hours before you power it up. For electronics, we just have a basic temperature outlet. I got one that is Wi-Fi enabled, so that way I can connect to it and actually see what the temperature is without going outside to check it manually. I also got a super basic filter to start. This won't make the water like a pool, but it will help delay the amount of time between refills. This is a submergible aquarium style filter, so you just plug it into power and dump it into the water and it will start filtering it. For sealant, you want some good marine grade sealant. I went with Sikaflex 291 White because it's my favorite sealant and it's gonna work great for this application. My freezer didn't have any important electronics in the lid, so I was able to cut the cable and detach it from the lower wiring harness. And I did this because I wanted my lid removable. Uh, I don't want the liability of telling you how to do your wiring, so if you're uncomfortable with any of this stuff, uh, this isn't detailed, so don't do it if you're unsure. I didn't want the lid looming over me as I'm doing my cold plunges. So for the start here, I've removed it all together and I may add it back at one point if it feels necessary. But for now, I just like it as a free floating removable lid. I cut off these plastic tabs from inside my freezer and we'll seal them up later. I then did a thorough degrease of the inside of the freezer to make sure that the sealant will bond well. I also did some scuffing in some different areas and painted over some scratches that had appeared so that way they won't rust in the future put a heater in there and let it dry overnight. If your freezer has a water drain, you're definitely gonna wanna cover that up. So I filled mine with some hot glue so it would dry fast and then we'll cover it with some sealant next. Now it's time to seal the whole thing up like a bathtub. Really hard to go wrong here, but basically if there's anything that looks like it's gonna leak or be a seam, you want some sealant over it. So use your sealant, go to town. If you want a nice smooth finish on these joints, you can use some soapy water and a glove. It makes it really easy to smooth it out nicely. And that's it, the moment you've been waiting for, you can now fill your freezer with water. For powering your freezer, plug it into your temperature sensing outlet, put the probe inside the water, and then if the water becomes warmer than your set temperature, it will cycle on the freezer to cool down the water to your desired temperature. For me personally, I started at seven degrees Celsius because Dr. Huberman said that's the starting point that a lot of papers and the science around dopamine studies with cold plunge and cold exposure were kind of organized around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, that kind of thing. If you really wanna take it to that edge of freezing and get ice chunks, you can easily do that. I did that for demonstration purposes and accidentally created a bunch of ice, which is kind of annoying, but you can have it floating right at that just above freezing level perfectly and have it be ready for you. You can also set this outlet to run on a timer so that way it only starts cooling in the morning when you're getting ready to use it or whatever your schedule is. A really important thing here around safety is please make sure that you unplug this stuff before you actually get in it. That's really important because you don't want to get shocked with household power surging through your body in water. So please just unplug stuff before you go in. Be smart about it. Don't mess with power. This is just for demonstration purposes, obviously. Okay, well, 
below the water line. It's negative 10 degrees. Uh, so that's the metal, obviously not the water lines, it would be frozen. So that is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know the proper way to christen an ice bath, but uh, I figure a, sh a shot of whatever your favorite uh, liquid is in your first plunge. I've been using this setup for doing cold plunges for over a month now, and I've been really happy with how I set it up. If you have any tips as well, you can drop them down below. For me, the experience of actually doing cold plunges has been challenging, yet rewarding, and also just more difficult than I expected, if I'm being honest. Maybe I should make a whole video about that side of things as well. Uh, I personally shrugged off doing cold exposure for years, even though I'm seeing Wim Hof talk about it, and clearly it has some benefits. I just assumed most people that were doing it were doing it as a mental exercise for toughness or to reduce inflammation or something. I didn't really understand it. And it was actually Dr. Andrew Huberman's episode on dopamine that really helped me understand this cold exposure and how it can help regulate dopamine release. That was really fascinating to me. And I strongly suggest if you're interested in that stuff at all, definitely check out his episode because it explained things really well for a simple person like me. And I'm very curious to see over a long period of time how regular use of this could help regulate dopamine in the mind, in my body, and if I'll notice an effect of that. So that's kind of my main motivation of investing in this setup. So I wanted to use a real world example, something that I was just doing earlier today to let you know about the sponsor of this video, and that is Squarespace. So I build and run all my websites on Squarespace because it's incredibly simple to do and I don't have to be a website designer to, in order to make it happen. So this is the Adventure Film Academy website that I run. That's for the teaching that I do for filmmaking. And what makes Squarespace really powerful is that you can edit the website right here inside their graphic interface. So everything is just drag and drop and behaves how the final design will end up looking. So if I just wanted to chuck another button in right here all i'd have to do is just search for a button place a button in and say this is my new button and just as easily we can add other things like text so we can change the styling here we'll make it a heading two this is our big text this is just the simplicity behind what I really appreciate about Squarespace. So they have a lot of different utilities that you can embed in here with newsletter stuff, uh, embedding video, ways to schedule meetings with clients, uh, contact forms. Those are all things that I rely on regularly on my website. Uh, things like the contact form on my production company website, I get dozens of messages through that a week. And it's just a very helpful way to kind of keep those organized in my inbox and make sure that I'm uh, getting back to people as fast as I can. So that's Squarespace. I recommend heading over and starting a free trial just to see what it's like. Uh, actually get your images on there and kind of get a sense if you like the platform. And when you're ready to commit, make sure that you use my code for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Totally warm. Oh, I forgot to do the shot inside. No. Here's to cold therapy.